What we don't want is the moment to be taken away from him. We don't want this to be like, oh my gosh, no, last year had COVID, what really happened? No, 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 no. The story has to be, Tobogo won a gold medal, his fe the first gold medal for Botswana. That should be the prevalent story and the only thing that we're talking about. Because it is very difficult to win a Olympic gold in the 100 and 200. That's alone is, is hard enough. To do that in several Olympics, four years apart, is insane. Congrats to Let's Seal Tebogo. Congrats, congrats, congrats. Because that's what we're going that's what that's that's how we're that's how we're, we're gonna start this. We're gonna start with con congrats. He won, he deserved the win, and he ran a amazing race. He ran an absolute amazing race. We we'll get into the whole no allow stuff, but that shouldn't matter. He ran an absolute amazing race. Because I'll be real with you. So I used to run the 200s. Basically, my, my events were 100, 200, long jump, but really 100, 200. And the 200 is a very different race from the 100 because it's about the lane, the, the lane you're in. You don't want lane one or lane eight, similar to the 100, and how you run that bend. Because 100 is just run straight. But for 200, it's the speed in which you go through the bend, how you run the bend, and how you now straighten up. So that's transition from the bend to now the straight is, is very crucial, how you run the bend, transition from the bend to the straight, and then what you're able to now do to really accelerate all the way through. So because some people are like, oh, I'm going to go fast all the way through. I'm going to go like maybe 70% to begin with, then go full tilt. So I have something left in, in the tank. And for Tobogo, he obviously ran a very smart race because that guy had like extra, like an extra like red, green shell or whatsoever, blue shell. I had a freaking blue shell. Like he was able to fully accelerate and save so much, which is why when I was watching the race, I was like, oh, Lars looks good. Because at the bend, it seemed as if, okay, Lars, I think he's now controlled, maintained the race. But then at that straight, Tebogo obviously saved a lot on that bend and just completely used what he had in reserves and just finished beautifully. And he finished so well. He finished so well. Bro, he chilled out. Look at the distance. Like look, like look at the look at the distance he has from the other two. And look at Noah Lars struggling. And my thing though is he could have, he'd have run faster. So he did the whole Usain Bolt thing. He could have actually run a lot much more of a faster race. So because like in the last few minutes, you just saw him beating his chest saying, yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? So he was very comfortable. He was very comfortable. So whatever that time you, you, you had there, he could have run faster. And what makes this amazing is they say that this is the, um, so they say that this is the fastest time, our fastest time ever by an African. So it's an African record. And it's the first time an African has won the 200 meters gold. So shout out to... Tebogo, obviously, very sad story because his mother, I believe, died in May. So he had his mother's birthday, it's like on his shoes. So obviously that was really weighing heavy on him. And maybe that was his, his inspiration. But amazing race, superb, amazing race. Now, he, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. So this is no last race. So this is actually his race. So because he said that... Um, the 200 is his wife. The 100 is his mistress. <laughs> those, those are the words that he said. So the 200 is actually his stronger race. Um, and when he came out, I was like, oh, he's hyped up. Boom, boom, boom. And it was a similar thing that he did for the 100. Came out hyped up, won the 100. So I say he's coming out hyped up. Looks good. Looks fine. He's going to say, what's up? And people said that he was a strong favorite there. So he loses, Tebogo wins very comfortably with an amazing race. And then we now have the narrative. See, we're not going to do this. This is not what we're going to do. What we're not going to do is, man, if Noah was fully fit, he was carrying an injury. Look at him, he now had to be wheeled away. He was not even um, fully awake. He was fully fit. No. Because that is insulting what Tebogo did. Tebogo beat him. And he won. 
Wikipedia wouldn't say, well, so Tebogo won the gold medal at the 2024 Olympics only because Noah Lyles um, was carrying um, two broken legs. No, Wikipedia will say, let's see Tebogo of Botswana won the gold medal for Botswana, Africa's first gold medal, full stop, and that's it, <laughs> nothing more. So when, especially when I saw this, I was like, no one, don't try. See, see. then I was like, no, 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 this is bad. Don't try and now change the narrative of like, oh my gosh, the the, the guy who was favorite to win, he wasn't fully fit, what's happening? So now you now take it away from Tabogo and it's now focused on you. No, no, don't. Because see, for me, that is bad sportsmanship. Hold the L, take the L, you lost fair and square. But it gets deeper. Breaking news. He had COVID. So rather, he has COVID. So his Olympics is pretty much done because I believe the four by one is on Saturday off. Or I think it's on Friday, the four by one. So he he's, he's out. So he was carrying, he had COVID. <laughs> so my thing was, okay, if you have COVID, should you be allowed to race? Because he didn't get COVID during the race. He didn't get COVID after the race. He had COVID before the race. So if he had COVID, should you still be in the vicinity of other people hugging other people being around? So this now, so this is just where that this gets interesting because now my whole thing though is if you had COVID, should you have raced? So obviously you're not 100 percent And let me be clear, I'll double down. Even if you had COVID, I don't give a damn. Tibogo won gold medal. And what you're not gonna do is Man, you know, I, I I came out, even if I didn't have to come out, I was feeling 100%, but I still came out and ran. If I was 100%, I'd have won. No, no, don't, don't do that. Because my thing, though, is remember, Teboko could have run a faster race. I could have run a faster time. He's, he won by so much, he slowed down. So even if Noah Lars was 100%, I think Teboko still wins. <laughs> I still think he wins because he won so easily like this. He might have won. He, he might just still have just won if Noah Lars was 100%. So, but... What I just find confusing is, okay, look, there's, there's so many questions I have. So if you had COVID, should you have been allowed to race? Safety protocol, health and safety, that stuff. Secondly, I do understand from, it, the Olympics is every four years. This is really the zenith of every athlete. So you want to seize this moment. And no allows was I like, bro. No, I wanna, I wanna be like Bolt because he wants to, re he wants to replace Usain Bolt as the face of athletics. So gold hundred, gold two hundred, lead my team to four by one. Um, because he's been speaking about, he wants to now bring back interest in sprints, which has been lost with Usain Bolt leaving. Um, so I get why he was desperate to, to race. By the end of the day, okay, no, everyone race fine. But if you lose, that's on you. Because what we're not going to do is be like, okay, you know what? Hey, he did have COVID though. So, you know, no. Nah. The moment you step out there, you moment to the game, on your mark, sets go, and you're out there, you're, you are fine. If you're not fully 100%, then don't turn up. If you turn up, you're 100%. If you lost, you lost fair and square. That's that. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to take the moment away from Top Bogo. So again, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get what yeah. if I was in his position, I'm, I'm if I was no allowed, I'm racing. I am I am I'm racing. And I would like to believe that if I raced and I ended up coming third, I would like to believe that just based on my personality, I'm like for me I'm like, man, if I was hundred percent, but I would never in public even say Hey man, I'll be like, hey, I lost. It, 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 it is it, it, it is what it is. I lost, you know. But I just feel like if this this was just this, this was this was too extra. Like he was on the ground, he was going. He could. Here's my thing. No, you just see if this was me, just just go, go. You are strong enough to stand up and walk away. Did you have to be put in a chair? Did you have to have the medical guys coming through? Did they have, I mean, did, it's too, because the annoying thing though is what we don't want is the moment to be taken away from him. We don't want this to be like, oh my gosh, no, last year had COVID, what happened? No, 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 no. 
The story has to be Tobogo won a gold medal, his fe the first gold medal for Botswana. That should be the prevalent story and the only thing that we're talking about. We should not even mention Noah Lyles having COVID. But he's still the daddy. <laughs> he is still the daddy, you know. And again, it, it just shows you we had to truly cherish what Usain Bolt was in terms of this for several Olympics, gold medal in 100, gold medal in 200, ran the last leg of the 4 by one and said, what's up? I was just watching the, um, I think it was the 4 by one I think it was in 08, because that was where Tyson Gay was there. I think they said it was like the fastest ever relay race ever. And when that guy, because when he received the baton for the last leg, it, it was close, and America might have been ahead, and how he just accelerates. Bolt was special. And I get that Noah Lars wants to try and replace Bolt, but when we are to talk about the top of the, the top sports people of all time, Usain Bolt is there. Like what he did for track and how he, there's never been a superstar of track like Usain Bolt. There's never been. Like, bro, I, I, I remember first seeing Carl Lewis, then from Carl Lewis went to like Morris Green. We understand what Jesse Owens did with your boy AH back in Germany. But in terms of bringing in that superstar status where people were like at the edge of the seats and maintaining a level of excellence in three Olympics, do you know what it means to win gold in the 100, 200, and 4 by one Because it is very difficult to win a Olympic gold in the 100 and 200. That's alone is hard enough. To do that in several Olympics, four years apart, is insane. It's insane if you know anything about sprinting <laughs> and just how competitive sprinting is, where it is literally by a freaking thread of a hundredth of a second between you and other people. So what Bolt did was insane, and Bolt was, is literally one of the most incredible specimens or athletes that the world has ever seen the world has ever seen. Um, so it just allows us just to take notes and just to appreciate who that boy was in Baltimore.